welcome back to the Six Five Podcast, and we are talking about our favorite topic. It seems like we've been talking about for the last two and a half years, and that is about AI. I mean, it's transforming industries, and the ecosystem build out is absolutely amazing, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, I was invited uh, two and a half years ago uh, to Redmond to actually sit and, and listen to uh, Sati Nadella. And uh, this guy named Sam Altman uh, talk about this thing called generative AI. And I was in the audience with about 100 other people. Uh, who knew uh, it would it would get us here? And it's it's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, I like to talk about the uh, the four horsemen of uh, of data center uh, AI. And and you know CPU GPUs in particular uh, and XPUs get a lot of uh, a lot of camera time. Uh, storage, uh, memory, CPU, but the one thing that pulls it all together is is networking, right? And that's something that I think uh, more people are finding. I mean, people in data center world, they 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 know this is important, but more people are seeing the importance uh, of that uh, out there. And I'm pleased to have Manish Mehta uh, from uh, Broadcom to talk about one of the most exciting new types of technologies out there, co-packaged optics or CPO. How you doing, Manish? Doing well. Nice to be with you today. Oh, man, you you have been on an absolute uh, ride here, Broadcom, the entire company. Uh, you've been obviously super busy in, in, in what you're doing. And, you know, it's funny, I, I remember uh, co-packaged optics being a glimmer in the eye of the industry. OK, it's like, OK, Sunday, we're going to get here. This theory is great. We've got research here. But here we are. You are launching uh, a product here. And what I've known to uh, uh, to understand and love about Broadcom is you don't launch things until they're ready. So, hey, tell us more about what you're launching today. Yeah, so we are launching our third generation co-packaged optics product. It's called Tomahawk 6 Davison. It is a 100T Ethernet switch that is going to co-packaged with optical engines to where all of the bandwidth from that package escapes optically, enabling connectivity to other switches or NICs connected to XPUs or GPUs for building effectively very, very large AI clusters. You know, I think as, as is becoming quite apparent to everyone who's involved in the AI space, these, uh, you know, AI computers are comprised of so many GPUs or XPUs. And when you require that kind of reach, you have to connect them optically. And uh, we're very excited to be launching this product, which can really improve the power consumption, the energy efficiency, and the performance of optical links that are necessary for really, really large AI clusters. Yeah, what CPU, CPO can do inside of a, a rack and then inside of connecting racks is is, is amazing. Um, you know, the ability to, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, just when you think uh, power budgets have have stayed the same, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing specifications that are actually doubling, right? I'm seeing, you know, 2.5 gigawatts, uh, out there and then anything that can be done to reduce power inside to jam in at as many of these high power accelerators uh, and and GPUs is is, is a no it is I don't want to call it a no-brainer because nothing is yeah. but it's what the market wants yeah um you hit it on the head so optical interconnects which actually consume far more power than electrical interconnects. And with every generation of a switch or a GPU or XPU, the bandwidth requirement is going up. The desire to increase the number of devices connected to each other is going up. And this is really, really straining the power budgets of at the rack level and at the site level. So, you know, we launched our initial activity in co-packaged optics actually before AI um, was the application, was the use case. And, and back then, you know, we, we saw the power problem, but we knew that over several generations that was going to continue to get worse. 
and you had to innovate, you had to bring all of these components closer together on the package to minimize how much power was going to be consumed. And, um, you know, as we were maybe somewhat fortunate that AI then took off and the value of this technology has really skyrocketed in the last few years. Listen, uh, one person's luck is another person's vision, okay? But one thing we've seen in the industry uh, is is that um, the ever-present demand for this compute uh, today, and but you had to make these bets years ago uh, in order in order uh, uh, to get there, and it's 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 amazing that uh, that the, this is actually reality. You know, I remember sitting through a lot of industry shows and talks about the future of co-packaged optics and oh my gosh it's hard it's never going to happen i mean heck we were debating debating optical right, right. versus copper for certain uh and we still are for certain implementations right. but uh but 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 here we are hey i saw the use of industry first okay and you know as an analyst and a kind of an insider you know my ears perk up uh, I do like when companies come out and will say, uh, we're doing this first, but but what is it that's industry first about what you're announcing here? Tomahawk 6 Davison is the first 100T Ethernet switch that is co-packaged with optics. Okay. Absolute first in the industry taking... You know, the, the foundation of Broadcom's networking and AI technologies, three founding principles, open, scalable, and power efficient. And of course, that Ethernet platform is meant to be a open platform. So by building and first being the first to release this 100T Ethernet co-package switch, um, we're enabling the industry to adopt co-packaged optics with the next generation of switching in a very open and interoperable format that will enable these devices to talk to other devices based on the same Ethernet industry standards. No, that's good. And, you know, there's different ways to, to accomplish, you know, what you're trying to accomplish out there. You know, there's some competing standards, there are some, uh, you know, very well-known proprietary technologies uh, that might start with an N um, that, um, you know, are trying to accomplish the the same thing. And I'm curious, what are the benefits of the way that you're, you're attacking the problem? Yeah. So we, you know, we designed these switches to uh, optically interoperate with any other device that's operating with 200 gig PAM4 IEEE compliance. So that means that this switch can interoperate with another ethernet switch that is compliant to that IEEE optical spe spe uh, specification. It can inop interoperate with uh, NIC cards at the server level that are, you know, enable the connectivity from the XPUs and GPUs for scale out networking. Um, so that that foundation of saying, you know, that, hey, we need to really integrate the optics onto the switch package in order to reduce the power and, and we believe improve, you know, reliability and, and link stability uh, for user experience. But we want to ensure that the devices we build are going to interoperate with other critical devices uh, that are released by peers and, and partners in the industry, I think was a really important um, foundation of, of where we began. So you couple the actual Ethernet switch with a IEEE compliance standards-based optical interface, and, and now you have something that can very uh, more easily scale than, um, you know, very easily scale, just like historical Ethernet platforms have. Yeah, so I interact a lot with hyperscalers, and a lot of things that you're outlining uh, make make sense to me uh, on that. So, um, Broadcom doesn't get a lot of credit for what it's done in 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 CPO. I think you know one of the elements is that you typically don't talk a lot about technologies until until they're productized. Um, but you know, I visited you for an AI day uh, a while a while back and 
I saw stuff, I touched stuff, uh, I, it was there. Uh, this isn't your first rodeo on this. I, I think it might help. Maybe a, a question I have for you, maybe talk a little about the history of uh, developing uh, CPO technology uh, at, the, at, at the company. You're right. This is our third generation CPO product that we're announcing. Uh, we made our first announcement for development of co-packaged optics uh, almost exactly five years ago. I think it was around January 2021 that we announced in the industry that we're making this investment and um, had a first generation product, which, you know, allowed us to really build. It was based on a 25T Ethernet switch, and it allowed us to really build a, a platform, a design platform, a manufacturing platform, and start to partner and enable a co-packaged optics ecosystem with critical industry partners, either foundry partners and OSATs doing advanced packaging, companies making uh, all the fiber cabling that's required in these boxes that now are extracting all of the bandwidth uh, through light rather than electrically. You're right. You know, you've mentioned that people have been talking about co-packaged optics for a long time, a little yeah. over two decades. Right. Um, but we we made an effort to early in our investment bring together the ecosystem to actually deliver a full system product. And and we were able to achieve that at a very small scale in our first generation device that was called Tomahawk for Humboldt. Then we had our uh, second generation product, Tomahawk 5 Bailey. And I think, you know, the AI day you're referencing is where uh, we had that on display. And that was our 51 terabit co-packaged Ethernet switch. We called it Tomahawk 5 Bailey. And, and that really allowed us to take the next step in volume and scale on co-packaged optics and get a larger number of customers a lot more familiar with the technology, expand the partner ecosystem and the supply chain. So now we're very comfortable as we go into this third generation product that we've established a really strong foundation of technology, uh, partners, technical platform, and um, you know can, can continue to expand the value of co-packaged optics to our end customers. That's good. I didn't, I uh, probably should have asked you at the, the beginning of the show, but, but what does the availability look like uh, of this? Yeah. So we're, you know, we're taking orders now for these devices, pretty excited to get them into the hands of customers. You know, we expect in, in 2026, it's going to be a year of testing and qualification, which is pretty natural for sort of a leading edge technology um, and excited about where we go from there for, for a large scale. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you have a roadmap, um, and you know, you, you probably have multiple generations that you're, you're looking at right now beyond, beyond slideware. And I'm curious, um, what are some of the things that, that you are looking to on your road, I'm not asking you obviously to disclose your roadmap, uh, mm -hmm. but, but maybe talk a little bit just say what you can about your, your CPO roadmap. Sure. So in our first two generations, uh, the Humboldt and Bailey generations, both operated at hundred gig per lane. And uh, our third generation Davison uh, is doubling the per lane bandwidth. So it's operating at 200 gig per lane. It doubles the overall bandwidth versus the prior generation, the Tomahawk 551T device. Um, but we actually announced a few months ago that we're already in development on our fourth generation CPO. It's going to be, again, doubling the bandwidth per lane. So we'll be moving to 400 gig per, per channel. And, um, you know, that next phase is, while evolutionary, we're really excited about some of the steps we're taking in improving signal integrity improving advanced packaging to take the next step in, in shoreline bandwidth density and in power efficiency. So, you know, I think we've got the team um, obviously really focused on scaling the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 platforms, but also uh, putting their heads down and working hard to make sure that 
400 gig per lane CPO can be available to the market as the core ASICs that require them, whether they're switches or NICs or XPUs, start to emerge that require that type of bandwidth. You know, if I look at the needs of the hyperscalers, uh, they have changed, but it, some things that have remained consistent uh, is uh, heterogeneous, heterogene heterogeneous environments are, mm -hmm. are super uh, mm -hmm. important uh, to them and the ability to uh, take certain pieces of technology and optimize it and make it make it theirs uh, is is very consistent out there. And, and what I'm seeing uh, so far uh, from you is that you are uh, delivering that that possibility or the ability to to be able to deliver that while hitting low latency uh, and low power. Yeah, so, you know, we at Broadcom are focused on building chips, and then we work with a broad uh, ecosystem of partners who can build systems for different customers and users. So we're, we're really excited about what the uh, partner ecosystem developing systems are going to be able to deliver different configurations, form factors, sizes. Um, I think that's really exciting, but but the commonality you're going to see across all of these, as you mentioned, you know, lower power versus traditional optical interconnects, lower latency versus traditional optical interconnects, and our power is um, you know more than seventy percent lower than what's going to be delivered with kind of a traditional one point six terabit pluggable optical module using a DSP. The other thing that we're really excited about is the um, improvement we've seen in the reliability and the link stability of a optical interconnect when it's uh, delivered in a co-packaged format versus kind of traditional pluggable transceivers. And I think this is something that is maybe didn't matter as much in the days of standard cloud computing when there was a lot of redundancy in the network. But as we move to AI, where you have these large training jobs and every link flap generates kind of a checkpoint retry, reducing that, um, that link instability can really improve GPU and XPU utilization. And I think that's resonating quite a bit right now with our customers. Yeah, and this was one of the pre-market objections to this this type of technology as a category, which was the reliability. And if something goes down, hey, with a transceiver, I could just you know put a new one in there and and, and call it a day. And I'm uh, I like the novel ways that uh, that that you have uh, attacked this uh, this challenge here. So I'm an each big day. Uh, appreciate uh, congratulations on the announcement. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll never hear the names of the customers that are actually using it. Uh, but I, but, you know, I think we all kind of know uh, who are the movers and the shakers uh, uh, out there, but I really appreciate uh, you spending the time. All right. This is Patrick and Manish talking here about CPO, a uh, big launch uh, by Broadcom. Uh, I love that uh, things that, you know, have been in research uh, for 10 years, uh, 20 years become a literally a productized reality. And that's not the same for all technologies about there have been a lot of really good research studies that never actually got productized. But here we are uh, with CPO uh, solving uh, those power issues, the bandwidth issues, and then the added reliability with these uh, these newer types of designs. Hit that subscribe button. Check out all of the hyperscaler data center networking tech discussions that we've had here on the 6.5, as well as those we've had with Broadcom. Hit that subscribe button. Take care.